Hey guys, welcome back to Ebbs and Flows where we talk about the highs and lows on and off the field. My guest today, struggling for a guest this week. The fill in. <laughs> nah, see Norms, what's up, baby? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, what an intro, man. Me and Norm's ne never really talked about his football career and he just wants to, oh, I want to interview him and ask him a few different questions. So I thought we'd bring it in house. So uh, best mate, business partner, Corey, what's up, baby? How you going, bro? Yeah. Good. Um, so obviously we'll just dive straight back into it. We're talking about what was it like growing up in Benley. What was it like growing up? In those yeah, years? It, it, look, it, it's, um, I grew up in Housing Commission um, in Eagleby. Um, it was a bit of a rough place, but um, in saying that, my mum always you know, did a good job of, you know, not letting me be a little street kid type thing. You know, I was out there a little bit, but not too much. But yeah, it was um, it was a difficult place to grow up, but I had good family as well as around me as well. So yeah, it made it a lot easier. What kind of mischief did you, did you used to get up to as a kid? <laughs> I've got stories for days, man. <laughs> we used to, um, on the golf course, there used to be like um, <laughs> like this bush and the green was up top. And um, they would have to park their carts down, at, like down a little bit further. I just probably shouldn't be saying this, but yeah, they used to jump out and have to walk up. And we'd sit in the bush, and then we'd go like run in and take their phones <laughs> and that, <laughs> like just little that stuff like that. Proper just mischief like that. Um, yeah, just just stuff like that, bro. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like little naughty stuff. Yeah, not always, but like just yeah, that's what we do. Yeah. Um, so obviously your mum's played a big part in your life and I've, yeah. I've got to know her. Very strong woman. Yeah. What's, a, what's she mean to you? Yeah, obviously everything. Obviously, you know, she's a, she's a single parent to start off with. So she's done, um, you know, a terrific job there. Um, but yeah, she means everything like every other mum, like mum would to her son. Um, she's done a lot for me, obviously. I remember like when she used to work at Servo, she used to have to do like early mornings. She used to take me to work and I'd be in the back of the the back of the servo there and, and stuff like that. So Oh, you you wouldn't even been allowed there too. No, no, no. So we'd have this like little like little TV set up, a little TV for me in the back room and stuff like that. But yeah, to see her go through what she's been through, you know, to raise me is is good. And like you said, she's very a strong woman, independent woman. Um, doesn't really ask for help too much, which is not good, but you know, puts her under a lot of stress. But no, yeah, she's yeah, I love her. Um, I remember you telling me a story when I first hung out. <laughs> Someone was talking shit about you at the pub, and she flogged him. Yeah, no, no, it was it was at the skate park. I um I think I dropped in um in front of someone, and I was only young, and um he hit me, and I was like, oh sorry, sorry, because I'm not much of a fighter. Um and anyway, he um pushed me, and my mum was in the car, and come running around the <laughs> come running around the fence, and grabbed him, and started hitting him. Um, so yeah, so obviously I'm her world and, and, um, yeah, she's, um, she was a bit wild back in her day, but, um, <laughs> yeah, she's a lovely woman. She's a good woman. Yeah. I, love <laughs> yeah, I remember she always goes, um, her le you got to watch out for her left hook. It's a dangerous, <laughs> dangerous one, but yeah. Um, um, obviously known as a football player. How'd you get playing? Um, to be honest, um, I've got an older cousin. Um, obviously he's a five years older than me, DJ. Um, just playing in the, going over the, you know, your, your cousin's house or whatnot, playing when you're younger in the backyard. And, and he signed up, he was playing. He said, oh, you should come down and, and play. So I signed up at uh, the under sixes at Beanley Lions mm. and um, yeah, loved it from there. From day dot? Just day dot, on, like, yep. yeah, loved it. Um, I was a little bit bigger than a lot of the kids. So um they try to put me up another year, but my wouldn't my mum wouldn't let me. So she was uh, I'm a little baby. So yeah, she wouldn't let me. So I was always a little bit bigger to maybe under thirteens, maybe. Then everyone started catching up. But yeah, from day dot, I loved it, and um, it came pretty yeah naturally. Yeah, it was yeah. good. Um, you sort of recently sort of found out about like your heritage and you growing up without a dad, and you yeah. said your mum done a great job of doing both jobs. Mm. Uh, what was it like growing up without a dad? Um, Cause you, you wouldn't wouldn't know any different, would you? Yeah, know? it's kind of like yeah, I wouldn't know any different. Obviously, um, you know, you get friends and, and they've got dads and that growing up and all that. But for me, mum did a really good job, and um, 
I had a lot of my uncles that were around the same type of, uh, around the area. So I always kind of had a male figure that was in my life, but not a dad, if that makes sense. So yeah. Yeah, my uncles did a good job. Um, but yeah, it was, it's all I've known. It's weird. Like as you get older, you think about it a little bit more. Um, I had an opportunity. Mum was like, I can, you know, reach out and um, if you want to meet him, you can. But I just thought, well, it is what it is. Um, it doesn't bother me now. Like, you know what I mean? So yeah. it is what it is. I never felt like I had to meet him or wanted to. So, yeah, it was just... Has it changed now as you got a little bit older? Um, yeah, you get a bit more curious about it. You know what I mean? Like, it would be weird, but I don't know. If it happened, it happened. But if... Yeah, if it didn't, it wouldn't bother me, to mm. be fair. So, yeah, it is a bit weird. Yeah, I feel like I'd go the other way where, like, I'd be like, oh, I didn't have in my life, so I'd be like, fuck that cunt. Yeah. But, uh, you've always sort of been, like, pretty cruisy with a lot of things, eh? Yeah, so, yeah, like, I just think uh, anger's not going to change it, you know, being angry at him, blah, blah, blah. So, um, yeah, if it happened, it, it'd be weird if it ha I'd love just to see wh just what to he's look like, look. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I'd just love to see what he's like, what, yeah, what he's about. Um, but yeah, so to see if the apple don't fall far yeah, from the tree, that, <laughs> <laughs> that'd be the biggest one. So, mm. um, yeah. Um, so how do you sort of progress through football? Is this like, was your like childhoods revolved around it? Were you making rep teams all the way up to Keeper Park? Were you signed at a young age? Like, yeah. When you reflect back on your childhood and football, like what stories can you tell us? Um, yeah, look, well, I was just always at Beanley Lions until I was 14, but just coming through, um, you could kind of tell I was good, like good at it. You know what I mean? It came easy. Um, you know, from under 12s on, I was making the rep sides. Um, it did help that I was a little bit bigger than all the <laughs> other boys, you know, that man child. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I was making all the all the, um, all the the rep sides and that. But I, like, I don't know, a big one for me is like, because I don't have a dad, it's like, it was always like when I went to like rep things or what and seeing like plays with their dads i was like always wanted to make it without oh, okay. you know like yeah. a father uh, like influence you know you hear a lot of fathers have influence in that lower grades like who gets in the team or his son's probably not the best player but he makes a side type thing mm. so for me it was always that little chip on the shoulder that like oh i don't have a dad so i'm gonna be good yeah you know, so, so you do feel like you had to it's almost like you know in boxing when they say you know, the judges make all the decisions. Yeah, you have yeah. to like actually win. Yeah. So, so you just wanted to prove you're actually good enough. I think that was I think that was a big part. And like even like even like I can't really be told what to do. It's kinda like I didn't have that father figure, so I'm like, I'll figure it out by myself. Like, oh I've got this far, so like I don't really need your advice. <laughs> like looking back now, I'm like my footy career and like, yeah, I take a lot of things on board, but it would always be like, oh, I've got here. So on my own. So like, I'll just do it on my own. Like, you know, you hear a lot of, uh, especially halves go to, you know, experience halves or halves out of the game and just get advice and that. I never really did that. Mm. Or I never reached out to someone that could be like, oh, could you mentor me or stuff like that? I'm not saying a lot of halves do that, but looking back now, I probably should have, yeah. but I've always just had that little bit of, oh, I've got this far on my own. So Almost I'll be like right. me versus the world sort of vibe. Yeah, nothing that hectic, but I just it's always been a little bit like, yeah, I've got this far on my own, so I'll be sweet yeah. type thing. So yeah, That's kind of cool. Yeah, <laughs> and it all stemmed back from the not having an old boy and especially seeing it when I was younger, you know, kids rock up with their dad. The dad gives them a pep talk, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And I've got my mum talking to me. He's probably never played sports in her <laughs> life. Yeah, do this, do that. All right, yeah, mum, righto, thanks. Yeah. Love you, type <laughs> thing. But um, that's where I think it, it stems back from. Yeah, just back in those younger days. Yeah, because yeah. I, I, like I reflect, when you talk about your childhood, I th reflect back on my childhood. My dad was my coach and like me and Quaid, we had him all the time. Yeah, exactly. And like he was hard on us and uh, me and Quaid always talk about him like, that's the reason why we've done okay in life and yeah, of course. had that sort of discipline. Yeah. You've made it the other way. Yeah. Well, th yeah, to be fair, like like you said, that discipline things are probably a big um, a big thing that I kind of didn't have growing up as well. My mum, she kind of let me do what I want in mm. within reason. And I think if I had an, like a, a dad there kind of pull you in line, discipline you as, as they do, you know what I mean? It could have been a little bit different, especially mm. my character growing up. 
<laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. You know what I mean. So yeah, and I, like I think about it, like when uh, we got a bit older and we we're going out and stuff, and kind of once the autopilot goes on, like I'd always go, nah. Yeah, you just go, okay, let's keep going. Yeah, ex exactly <laughs> right. And back in my mind, subconsciously, I think, fuck, if I go home, I'm probably gonna get a high. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So <laughs> and my mum, my mum used to, uh, she never used, to, oh, she used to get up me. She never used to flog me. Mm. Like used to throw everything else, but but me, but. So like you said, you would have got you would have got hidings, you know what I mean, from the old man. But yeah. yeah so, <laughs> <laughs> uh, when did you sign your first contract? Um, I think it was when I was sixteen. It would have been at the Bronx for the um, they had a senior academy type mm. thing. So, did you get me any money for that? Um, no, we got um, joggers, Nike, because they were with Jog Nike. Yeah. They were with Nike, <laughs> so we got the Nike joggers, um, boots. Maybe I got a little bit. I can't remember a couple of thousand, maybe. Mm. But um, yeah, that would have been my first one at the Broncos. Yeah, who was your who was coming through at that time, and who was coaching you? Was it was that Paul Green when? Yeah, he did. Paul Green he did the um, junior, our uh, senior academy. Um, but I had Gerald, Josh Hoffman, Bearley, um, who are Dane Gay guy, Dale Copley, all that all that type group were in that senior uh, senior academy when we were coming through. Yeah. So was the plan always to go to Kibra or did you get picked up from Kibra or like how um, does that work? Yeah, no, so again, uh, my cousin that introduced me to rugby league, basically he had friends that went down to uh, Kibra Park and it was a footy school. And he said to my mum, put Corey in, um, cause I was going to Windaroo High, my local school. So it's <laughs> <laughs> nothing doing there. <laughs> so I was there in year eight. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was in year, there year <laughs> eight, fucking, yeah, running a mark. So, um, and then my cousin's like, yeah, get him down to the footy school. It's like what, subjects, football, blah, blah, blah. So I went down there, but apparently they sent me a scholarship in year eight, but I never got it. Oh. Yeah, so it was weird. What, didn't check the mail? Mum oh. <laughs> no, no, must have threw it away. <laughs> yeah, they want a baby moving away, but... Yeah, apparently I got one in year eight, but never got it. Um, and yeah, so then I went down there and they're like, oh, we, you know, we offered. And I was like, I'd never got it. So <laughs> yeah, anyway. So did you get a scholarship or you end up having to No, pay? I just went there. Oh, okay. Because um, I was all, it was either there or Brisbane Grammar, the union school. Mm. Um, they were pretty keen as well. So I ended up, because rugby league was everything. So I ended up going to uh, Kibra Park and um, yeah. Was there till year 12. How was that? Best. <laughs> the best. You guys well, love it, eh? Honestly. You guys love, I reckon out of all the schools that struggled to let the high school go, Kiefer Park would be right <laughs> up. <laughs> Kiefer Mate, Park would be at the top. Trust me. The, oh, we had so much fun there. And like, if you were in the footy program and you are just say when you're older and you're in the A's or if you're in the 15s, 16s, you're in the top side, like, you know what I mean? You're it, you know yeah, what I mean? So, Is it like um, those American movies when the football teams? Yeah, yeah, like literally like I would have English and then I'd just be down at, at the thing shooting hoops with um, the PE teacher and stuff like, you know <laughs> what I mean? And, and if we're all just sitting around um, just talking and then a teacher would come past and she'd be like, oh, you're meant to be like, nah, miss, we've got a spare. Like a spare is like a free class. Yep. This is in like year 10. I think you had one of them. <laughs> yeah. I mean, okay, like we've all got our footy shorts on and our polo. That was our our um, our kit for school. Yep. Um, so yeah, it was just good like that. We had probably way too much freedom at that young age and yeah, it was just fun, man. It was good. When did you have your first bear? What age? Oh, I was young, bro. <laughs> I was young. <laughs> I was young. Uh, I would have been like, yeah, I was young. Uh, like 10, maybe? Oh, Eight, shit. Nine, fun. 10. Double digits, just. That's crazy. But it wasn't like I was sitting there drinking my thing. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I was like, I was more sneaking it and drinking it a bit. But like, I reckon like constantly, probably like 12, 13. <laughs> I grew up in a small town too. Like I started drinking, I was like 14, 15. And like yeah. to me, that felt young. And when I look back now, yeah. that's young, but far 12 is crazy. Yeah, that's, um, that's when the slippery slope happened. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's when uh, the old mudslide happened. Yeah. But yeah, um, yeah, it was, oh, it was pretty young. Uh, so you obviously rolled in through like, like you said, you made all the rep teams, Bronx, strong development system mm. coming through good guys. What was that period from like into Kibra? To mm. arrive alive to yeah. 20s to first grade yeah it was good it's just exciting like back then you're not i wasn't you're not thinking about all that oh you know am i gonna make it or it's just fun with like with i'm with mates now for the rest of my life that went to that school like we're still really tight 
you're just playing footy with your with your mates. Um, but it was a, it was an exciting time then too because you're just having fun as well. It's footy, mm. footy. You're having fun. You're young. Um, but yeah, the rival live was when I look back, it was pretty tough actually. We had a pretty good crop coming through. You know, PBC had some really good players like Rankin, Ryan James, all them top boys. Yeah, that came through there. But um, that was cool. And then because at Kibra, the thing was kind of to repeat. Um, so go there again when you're 18 yeah. and do school again and that would get you ready for 20s, blah, blah, blah. Oh, so okay. yeah, that yeah. was top of yeah. the... That, that's what a lot of boys did. They would go there. Um, yeah, it's a little run and joke. Kenny Edwards was like 25 and still in year 12. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'd give it to him about that. Um, no, nah, that was the thing, kind of repeat and then set yourself up and then you'd be ready to go take on 20. So um, when I left school, I was obviously with the Broncos. Um and I was thinking about repeating, whatnot, and um, yeah, I kind of said, "Nah, I'll just go play 20s. Mm. Um, and yeah, because Broncos were growing up, were our families like that. That's what we loved as well, Broncos. So it was just like, "Nah, I'll go um, play 20s as well." Yeah. So did you go like high school 20s and then straight into first grade, or was yeah. that the five? yeah? No, I will play 20s and yeah. then got the preseason that following that year and then played round one played round one yeah so. what was like 20s like obviously made junior kangaroos and going up to yeah some pretty good like new zealand sides that, too. yeah that I, was stacked. yeah that was good um again i feel like that 08 09 um 20s comp even maybe 010 was really strong still um so 20s was um 20s was it that was the best that time was good, ever. Eh? <laughs> you get the full kit yeah, like you're traveling. rocking that first grade like you know you're getting all the polos and stuff like that you get a TV game, everyone's getting their haircuts, just thinking you're a first grader already. But, <laughs> <laughs> but that was really fun. Um, we had a good team as well. We um, we went all the way to the prelim and got knocked out by Melbourne, mm. which they went on and um, won that won that year. So, yeah, it was good. It was fun. Yeah, I remember Bronx knocked us out the year before. Oh, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Yeah, that, oh, was, a, that was a good that was, game, man. But that was heartbreaking, man. Yeah. Especially, like you said, like when you're playing around all your mates and everyone's got the same ambitions to play. Yeah. You don't yeah. really have that feeling again, do you? Nah, not really, nah. And you go into first grade, these guys are 32. Exactly. Like you're rolling in at 18. Yeah, <laughs> and you've got, yeah, you're playing with like big dogs. Like <laughs> yeah. So you're not thinking that. But like you said, you play with your friends and everyone wants to be at the same, like the next level. Mm. And a lot of people go different ways after 20, so yeah. Um, how did you deal with the, obviously, or well, talk about your debut. That yeah. was, was crazy. Like yeah. I, didn't, I didn't know who you were. I yeah. watched your debut and you kind of just blew up on the scene. Yeah. Kind of just rolled into the Broncos, big name club, Suncorp Stadium, yeah. round one. It was playing good. Playing fullback. Yeah, it was good, man. Because even like um, the preseason when I went in, obviously I wasn't expecting it. Like mm. just went in there, enjoying my time. That was a star-studded team. Like, honestly, my idols were in there. You know what I mean? A lot of players in there that I looked up to for ages. Um, so I was in there just enjoying being in there as an 18-year-old. You know what I mean? Yeah. 19-year-old. So it was good. Um, Pre-season, I was training really well. Um, I remember... <laughs> What's that game where... Um, offside you, touch. Offside touch and you've got to follow the same person you can't link off. First one got put with Darren Lockyer. <laughs> Put me with the fit in it. <laughs> Put me with the go. Yeah. Oh, so I'm just like running around. But that, like again, that was that was cool. Um, um, but yeah, I put with him. But that was a laugh. And what'd you, yeah. what'd you learn from Lockie? Oh, look, I was saying this the other day. Just probably the, the how precise he was with everything. Like I probably didn't take that on board. But when I think back now, just how precise he was. Like even like almost coming in at the same time every day for training. You know what I mean? Mm. Like the way he prepped himself for training, the way he moved on the training field. Like when you're young, you're like, oh, this is cool. But not until you get a little bit older do you appreciate the way – he trained like he played, man. Like, And like if people weren't doing the right thing, he would let them know. And obviously it's him, so they would be on. Mm. So, um, yeah, just the way he moved, you always look back and go – he was good man he was the <laughs> man just everything was just, crisp mm. like, nothing was done half-assed nothing like it was just, when i think back i go that's why those type of players are where they are you know what i mean so yeah. um even like if we would have to do malcolms or something he didn't have to he would still be in there doing it type stuff like yeah it's crazy i remember you telling me a story that on days off like um he said 
grab all your young boys and yeah. take kids for a run. Yeah. Cool. So um, that was cool as well. Again, so involved with the younger boys. Um, so we'd run on our days off. We'd just go run to a cafe, talk with him, just talk about whatever, bit of life. We were probably about, yeah, 19, 20 then. It was that group that was coming through. Was he trying to live through you guys? Through maybe. I don't want to <laughs> wanna say anything for Lockie, but <laughs> maybe. Um, but yeah, just have a yarn and just, you know, type of just kind of tell us what it's like to to get to be a regular first grader, blah, 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 all that mm. type of stuff. And again, like like I've said, you, it's good in the moment, but you don't really take it on board. <laughs> so you get a little bit off. Well, that's me anyway. Yeah. But yeah, it was just unreal thinking about that he did that with us and... So you yeah. usually knock up a couple of K's in, in the off days, eh? Yeah, easy. It was probably about, probably two and a bit there, two and a bit back. It was nothing crazy. It was nothing hard. Mm. It was just, yeah, just him doing him, mm. taking us about. Was he like super technical when he was breaking down football players? Because I'll, I'll give you an example. Like when I come in and Stacey was a halfback mm. and like, you know, I'm a bit of a nerd. I'm mm. like, I would like to learn. Yeah. I like to ask questions. Yeah. A little bit probably the opposite to, yeah. opposite to you. Like I wanted to take on everything. Yeah. And he's asking him questions and he goes, oh, just like, just do whatever. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, fuck, I'm not you. Yeah. That, yeah. I think with Lockie too, um, He'd give you a little bit, but he'd never come in and t tell you what to do. And to be fair, I was like, always too asked, like too scared to ask him. Like mm. that, it's not that I didn't want it. I just was like a bit always nervous around him. Um, but yeah, he would more give you a few pointers here and there, but he'd never come in, you know, do this, do that. Like it was never on top of you type thing. So which I feel like is probably a good way to do it. Yeah. Because yeah. I feel like if you get guys, older guys telling you what to do all the time, you kind of get off those dudes eh, when you're a bit younger. Yeah. Well, you go to Lockie and then you've got Justin Hodges, Hodges which <laughs> which <laughs> makes you nervous in another way because if you don't get it right, it doesn't matter if it's your first day as an 18-year-old, you know, he'll, he'll tell you to go, you know, get effed and get, get off the field. If you're not going to perform at this level, we'll just beat it then. Or if you're not up to this level, beat it, which is – a good in a way, but I think that type of that type of way doesn't work these days. <laughs> no, you know what no, I mean? Guys like, take, yeah, yeah. I remember <laughs> we were playing offside touch again, and he threw <laughs> Gags a ball, and it hit him in the back of the <laughs> <laughs> hit him in the back of the head. He goes, "Gag, like, you know, uh, you can get off type thing." Yeah. And that was just normal. If you if you did a kick to him, a little kick across field, and it wasn't basically in his chest. Oh, your shit <laughs> get him off his rubbish type thing but mm. again that builds a bit of character back then that's what it was yeah you had to earn a lot of respect before you got to mingle with them guys as as well so yeah i feel like um <clears throat> like I, like a lot of the bronx boys were coming over to uh warriors at the time like we had bear again obviously denon was there um joel moon yeah uh but like uh, tady was there as well but i feel like they used to always talk about Bronx and how ruthless it was. Mm. And it wasn't until like Sean Berrigan <laughs> got to the club. Yeah. Bro, he would say shit that was so wild and just sit there and like crack up. And yeah. Like we weren't used to it, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Broncos, even in the Brett locker, Seymour, Brett Seymour the locker room chats, ruthless. Um, I think back then too, the it was, um, everyone loved a beer too, but you had to back it up. It was oh, like, yeah. if you drink and we train and you train shit or whatever, you went out like, see you bud you get weeded out real quick mm. or if you didn't drink it was like can we trust this guy <laughs> <laughs> that's it eh? yeah. um, Jakey Turpin said something to one time I don't repeat it but fuck it made me laugh along those lines yeah bro <laughs> can we trust this guy if he doesn't drink it was mm. like that type vibe but um no, nah, it was really good days. Uh, what was back then. what was the lay of the land like when you're a rookie coming in as like you go get the cones? Oh and shit yeah, like that? we. Yeah. I remember having to go when we would um, finish gym and that if there was no milk for the milkshakes and the smoothies and stuff. Well, on your bike, <laughs> see ya. Like <laughs> yeah. on your bike, get on your bike, do that. You know, if they told you to do something, you would do it. If you're at a bar, get a drink, you do it. Like yeah. you know what I mean? It was like that. That's good, eh? Like it's, oh, it teaches you discipline. Hundred yeah. percent. You just. You just can't waltz in and just think you got it, you know what I mean? But again, like I've said, those days have changed and it is what it is. My first team drink with the first grade, I was fresh out of high school too. And they're like, yeah. you're sober driving. Yeah, sweet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They're like, you don't leave until we leave. Yeah. But I'm just sober in this nightclub. Just yeah. going. <laughs> just want to get on the beer with the boys. Yeah. But, uh, I just got help with the sober driver. Yeah. So, yeah, it's good. Good time. I uh, had a roommate called Benny Tio. Yeah. He Obviously, was. like, he's, um, he, he was ahead of his time, the way he sort of moved through his career mm. and didn't 
I wouldn't like at the time when he was a Kiwi, but playing for Queensland mm. and moving to rugby and, and chasing deals. Was he what was he like to live with? Because I find him super interesting, even when he talks now, when he talks yeah. about interchange rules. And yeah, I think he's got a unique perspective on life. I think he's interesting. Yeah, he is good, and he's he's very he's very witty. Um, no, he was really good. Kind of taught me. Because the first time I moved out, he was my first roommate. <laughs> so I've moved out 19 up to Brisbane with him. Um, kind of just taught me, because obviously mum would do everything for me at home. Just He'd always be like, you know, if your space is clean, you know, you feel better. Like oh, yeah, if cool. your life's in mm. order, you know, it's all that type of stuff. You know, um, he he taught me and, and um, a lot of other things. Um, <laughs> Always, you got. I always say to him, "You got me good, man." <laughs> the women, man. Gift of the gab on the chat. <clears throat> yeah, can talk. He's really good. But yeah, Benny's very intelligent. Um, very calculated too. Like you know, he just doesn't do stuff to do it. You know mm. what I mean? So, um, yeah, I still keep in contact with Benny. He's, he's a good lad. So, um, I remember you telling me a lesson about when you ran out of money <clears throat> for petrol, and you just yeah, he, yeah, because um, <laughs> I was trying to buy a greyhound. <laughs> I was trying to buy a greyhound with the boys. And I ran out of money and like I hit him up and he was like, nah, like walk the train and like, <laughs> like if I give you money, you're just going to keep doing it type thing. Mm. So yeah, that was a back in the day when I was trying to buy greyhounds yeah. and, <laughs> and retire at 21. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that like stuff like that, he was very like, he like he was good at like life stuff like that. So mm. um, yeah. Good little lesson. <laughs> Good You'd little wake up early and take off to training. Yeah, yeah. take off to train. Like we didn't live too far from training, but mm. it was like it was enough. Yeah, it was enough. Like literally, but yeah, it was good it was as well. Uh, what about on the field? Obviously, you guys were star studded. Had a lot of talent come through. Mm. Um, what was those first three, four years of your? You were there a bit longer, weren't you? Yeah, well, yeah, it would have been nine three, to four years, five years. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was good. Um, uh, I played a few games my first I think I played like 11 maybe 11 games um, just oh, I don't know like back then like I'm not saying like I did it purposely but if you didn't turn up for a game you just look around and go okay we're alright you know what I mean like mm. so that type of way um, probably you, you know you could probably slack off a bit with the star studded team but it was fun it was enjoyable it was a lot of learning there um and i was like you said i was there for four years but then when i left to go down to para um i think i did a little bit of growing up football wise obviously um wasn't in a star studded team down there and, and kind of switched over so yeah so yeah how did that come about like the sort of coming down to Parramatta? like did you have different offers at the time um, uh were you gonna let go from the bronx what was happening no nah, the bronx um well 2012 i played the full season there at 5 8 and then they got they got princey in yep 2013 princey was there um he signed for two years i think it was i got pushed back to um, uh, fullback that year and again, being young, you think you just, oh, I played there last year. It's my spot type thing. Mm. And um, he was there. So I got pushed back and I was like, oh, I don't want to play fullback. Again, like thinking I've got a choice, like I've done something. <laughs> you know, when you're young, it's just, yeah. I think back now, I'm just like, what were you thinking? Yeah. Um, and then we finished that year off. Um, I don't think it was a good year. And and I thought Princey was going to be there again. And and um, Parry came to me. Ricky Stewart was there at the time, and um, he said, "You're my five eight. Like you're it. You're my five eight. So that's, that's what, what I, hear, that's what right? I want to hear." Yeah. Um, and kind of um, yeah. Sorry, yeah. I went there, and I kind of agreed to it. Um, and then obviously it came out, and then I think 2013 I finished my um, finished my year back at. Um, win them full time yeah. so I was coming in and then um, I was going to the Norman B on Sundays we'd play on Sunday and then come in to train <laughs> on Monday and hold the pads smelling of grog <laughs> and Hook goes nah enough's enough man I yeah. think I think a few of the older boys said something too mm. um, which I understand yeah now. fair enough oh, fair yeah. enough and like literally I was out there holding pads so it's like you're moving on like what are you what are you actually doing in here like type thing so finished my um, year off at Wynnum and, and went down to Para. Yeah. Um, so obviously like a lot of your football come really great at Parramatta. Mm -hmm. What was that like? And obviously you said Ricky Stewart signed you, but was he there the first year and then <laughs> BA was straight nah, on? Nah, I did the Harry Holt. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, were you worried about your position or anything or? Uh, nah. nah. Um, 
Brad Arthur came in. I didn't know anything kind of about Brad Arthur. I, I kind of just knew he came from Melbourne. Yeah, he kind of come from nowhere, eh? Um, yeah. And but he, again, he um, he kind of rang me and said like, "Oh, I'm a new coach," but kind of thing like, um, "You'll be the five eight type thing." So, because he was the he was the Melbourne's under twenties coach when we used to play. So he obviously watched me play. We oh, played cool. against him. Yeah. So he goes, "Oh, I know what you're about." Blah blah blah, and kind of said, oh, "You know, number six is your judge." Obviously, you're gonna have to work for it. There's a few other players there. It was me. Luke Kelly and Chrissy Sandow and all that there. Mm. So obviously it's not giving it to you, but you know what I mean. Um, it's yours if you, you work for it type thing. Um, but yeah, got down there, Ricky left um, and got Brad. Mm. What's um, Obviously Brad's been around for a while now mm. and people speak very highly of him. Mm. What was he? How important was he to you? Yeah, he was good. Um, Football-wise, he was really good. He was straight up with me. It always challenged me type thing, which was good. Um, he... Quite, I think he kind of took on the whole father figure role with me too. Like he'd, oh, yeah, always, he'd, yeah. he'd always look out for me and not only speak to me about football, but just stuff off the field and all that type of stuff. So I think he took on that role. And I mean, Brad had a really good relationship. So um, yeah, he'd always look after me too. So <laughs> yeah, and, and some. Fun. Yeah. So, um, you know, even it was a good time there. Um, we well, had... What was like the like culture shock? Obviously, coming from Brisbane, big club, you know what's going on. You're growing up in Queensland, yeah. Getting plugged in in Western Sydney and, and the Parramatta fan base. What was that like? Yeah, um, it was crazy, man. Because like you said, Bronx, we had all the facilities. What well, compared to what I went to down in Parramatta, we had a hot, cold sauna. And I remember one of my first days, we went got down to Richie Benno, and Brad puts a projector on, and we're watching video on the back of a toilet at a junior club. And I'm sitting there thinking, <laughs> what have I done? I've gone from Versace to I don't even know what. <laughs> we're going, what's doing? <laughs> yeah. um, anyway, and then like we roll out and he'd bring out the balloon, um, the pump up thing uh, for ice baths, you know, the pool. And yeah. that. I was just going, bruh. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it ended up working out well. Um, yeah, we had, we had a good team. Well, we didn't have, we had a, pretty good team um but yeah we had we had plenty of fun there uh the hang plane what was it like playing a film obviously in the, in the peak of his powers too. Yeah, yeah it was good um it was again one of those players you just sit back and watch what he does on the field um anyone that's you know played with hainsey or been around hainsey rats um <laughs> rats but when he switches on he knows you know what i mean like he's on so um you could tell when he was on and when he wasn't um <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it was good um and it was, even, it was disgusting how good he was exactly like was, he wouldn't even do weights or anything and still be strong powerful he'd be in there just going like this with a band <laughs> um but yeah it was unreal to um yeah get play alongside him even chrissy sandow man on his day he was one of the best halfbacks in the game back then you know yeah. what i mean i'm um, very talented and uh, me and him had a good relationship. We had, we had a laugh. We had plenty of laughs together. But um, yeah, it was good. The best thing about Para when we were there, we played a lot of footy. We probably didn't have the squad like the better team, but we played a lot of footy. Like I remember Brad saying, just attack, well, even if we're in our 20. Mm. And, and then um, worked for us for a bit. So yeah, it was good. Yeah, because I, I look, uh, I remember we used to play you guys in that time and like a lot of your shape was coming off like very far percentages, mm. like seven threes. And yeah. it was like far layer line down here and there was heaps of stuff moving. That's yeah. kind of how they play now, isn't it? Yeah. You guys are a little bit ahead of your time there. Yeah, I, I don't know. We just had plenty of footy in us. You know, I mean, we just wanted to play footy and we got given the green light. Mm. Um, you know, some days we'd pull off and some days it wouldn't. <laughs> you know what I mean? But the best thing about Brad, he'd just still encourage it. So yeah. um, it was good times and yeah. What well, at the peak of your powers, obviously, um, like a lot of things were going right on the field. A lot mm. of things were going wrong off the field. What was that year like? Because that's when I just met you. Yeah. You were sort of going through it. Well, you were going through yeah. it. I was kind of around. Well, was it, was it weird being it was able crazy. to, like you could just go out and you party know, and for two days and rock up and kill it, you know what I mean? But that's, that, that's the thing I always think back now is like, no matter how crazy my life was off the field, as soon as I got to footy or on the training, pa pa I wouldn't think about anything else but football. Like I was just, it must have been I was just so zoned in at that time. Or something, you know, when the boys have them breakout years, it just, it just like, yeah, how, no, no matter how crazy it was off the field or whatever was happening in my life, as soon as I started playing football, like it, it was, everything was sweet type yeah. thing. Um, look back now, it was pretty crazy and 
probably wasn't the best thing. Um, you know, you get to a certain point in your career, it's like, all right, like, do I keep bobbling on like this or do I knuckle down and go the other way? So I probably just kept bottling on, just doing what I'm doing. Mm. Again, thinking I'm going a lot better than what I really was. Um, yeah. You do, like, even, like, I've never never played in the form that you were in mm. during that time, but even when you do start to play NRL, you have this kind of mentality or ego around you that like you almost feel invincible mm. especially when things are going well mm. and like you were like you how many points mm. were you off winning the telly in the air i got like um i got suspended for eight games i had to pick up eight points or something like that <laughs> <laughs> you know bro, what i mean like, him, bro. yeah i know him. like i think back now like that kind of like that kind of hurts um especially with that that dinner how innocent it was and Back then, I didn't know the type of people like that that were there. Yeah, they were footy fans. Mm. They were just asking football, blah blah blah. You know what I mean? Um, so it was crazy to for all that to unravel pretty quickly. And like you're saying, um, the footy I was playing like that was not only for me but for the club and. To back that up, we lost our points. We were sitting like six or fifth yeah, as well. We were flying, flying yeah. you know what I mean? And I remember just going to train. It was a circus, man, circus. Like every day we were there and then it just seemed like it was all me and I'm like, boys, like, I'm so sorry. Yeah. So sorry. And then the salary cap stuff came and then it's just like, it was a bit of a slap in the face, especially to brad the coaching staff the club where you know 14 15 we missed out on the eight by two points then we started building that 16 and then all that happened like the club had been gone poor mm. previously and then 16 we start finding our feet we won the nines comp at the start of the oh, yeah, year that. Yeah, yeah um and you know it was good you know when para has success in the in nrl you know everything's you know kind of gone good they were that type of club out there so it was a bit of a slap in the face for all them and, and all that type of stuff. And to be fair, I didn't think it was going to be that serious because I didn't look at myself as a top player like that, mm. as in like, oh, I'm that good that it's going to be that effective or that much media type stuff. See, I think that's where I've got myself in a bit of trouble with before as I didn't realise the magnitude that I've that people know who I am. I just see myself as a yeah, you see knock yourself a, as a knockabout, eh? knockabout yeah. bloke that loves playing footy love being in the locker room talking shit with the boys type stuff mm. i think that's where um i got myself in a bit of trouble where i did have a bit of bit of weight behind me type stuff yeah and i remember you going through all that and just like i just sit there like stressing out eh? and you just be like <laughs> <laughs> just chill out i'm like fuck how are you not stressed yeah uh the the one i remember that when it all broke and the camera the they were knocking on my front door oh, um yeah, yeah, i yeah. think it broke on Saturday and we were playing Melbourne Monday night. Um, so I didn't leave the house and we had nothing. You know what that house was like? We had nothing in that house. Mm. Um, and they were just sitting out front, of, out front of the door and I was sitting there by myself and I got one of the boys to run in and gr grab me a feed. But that was probably the only time where I was like, oh, okay, this is, this is serious and this is real and mm. this is a pretty big thing. So that was where... <laughs> the kind of gut-wrenching feeling came from. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah that yeah. type stuff. And then, <coughs> again, played Melbourne on Monday. and I was, I was, That's where I felt clear, you know what I mean? So, yeah, it was, it was weird. Yeah. Um, so, obviously, you guys rolled into that next year and you've been through a bit of drama. Mm. Guys start to play pretty well again. Fozzie and that come over. Yeah. Jeez, I would have loved to um, play with Fozzie a bit longer. He really opened it up for me. Um, mm. He was really good. Just, you know, it's square to the line. You know, you run a bit of shape and you waltz out the back and, you know, there's a gap there. You just – it makes your job a lot easier as a 5'8". Um, it wasn't meant to be and then he had his dramas and it just seemed like <laughs> dramas everywhere at Parramatta all the time. Um, but in saying that, that year, Mitchie, Mitchie came over. Um, we ended up being in the top four, 2017. Yeah. Um, I so thought you was going to go all the way. Oh, man. We, <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, Jesus on Christ, yeah. Um, and that was a really good vibe type thing. And, and obviously we got there, we bowed out, um, which was disappointing. We almost had Melbourne on the ropes at that first game. So, mm. which was disappointing. And yeah, we bowed out and then, yeah, 
that following year wasn't wasn't too good. We came last that 2018. Oh, did you? He's come last. Yeah, it was. It was weird. We had that success in 17, and we kind of went back um, training, and our, our whole training kind of tra- like changed. We yep. train. We did. You did a lot of filming with us that year. We do a lot longer longer distance. Like we just like fell up. We were runners. Um, before that, we'd always be 13 on 13. Bit of fitness, 13 on 13. Just mm. so you're playing footy under fatigue. It's like a game. But um, I'm not saying that was the the issue. But um, yeah, it wasn't a good year for us. <laughs> it's not funny, but I just think about it. Like um, I know that time when they had a big camp and they, were, they had a big like. <laughs> Do you want to talk about that? Yeah. <laughs> well, so we had like an army camp, um, but it was I felt like it was more of a you sober up <laughs> Corey <laughs> camp. Um They were hard, but yeah, there was a it was a few things there that and again it probably came from the best like it wanted everyone wanted to try help me type thing. And when you're in there again, like I've said, I said, nah, like You're picking on I, me. No, nah, I didn't I didn't go that way. Um but I could see what was happening, and again, it's for, they were trying to do it for the best interest of me. Like I said, you can either look at, have a hard look at yourself, and go one way, or you just think everything's all right, and you go the other way. So, mm. we had that camp. It was a bit, it was a bit weird, but um, you guys lost like six in a row, eh? When you sobered up, yeah. <laughs> Maybe the sober thing didn't work. Yeah. All right. I was talking to Michael Hagen at um, Nudo's wedding. Yeah. Because um, he knew I love Joey. So he put, I remember that photo yeah, I had yeah. back in the day. And I was sitting next to Joey and I was like frothing because it was the first time I met him and yeah. stuff like that. And Michael Hagen was on our table. Mm. And he said something to me that day. And he's like, if Joey was like a straighty 180, mm. he wouldn't have been Joey. Yeah. And I, like I think about that. You, But the hard part is when everyone started. And that's the, probably the point of... In our rail where everything started to get like a little bit more serious. Shifting, eh? Yeah, of course. Yeah, it's it, it shifted. And again, like if you got your main player who loves going out in the piss, what about, what do you think of the kids coming through? You know what I mean? They gonna look at that. Well, that's what we type, of, that's what we came through with, mm. but it's different times and it's, it's changing. And, and I get what, I get what they were trying to do. And, and for myself, looking back, it should have been a bit of a wake up call, especially after a couple of good years before that could have been, all right, let's knuckle down and let's see where it goes. Yep. Um, but yeah, obviously that didn't happen and, and I don't know, I just, it is what it is. All right, all right. I know you had a couple offers that year where mm. you could have skedaddled mm. and uh, power were going down. Mm. You were still playing de- all mm. right mm. and had to get offers from a few different clubs. Mm. And I remember you telling me like, oh, I can't leave the boys. Yeah. Do you look yep. back on now and think, fuck, I could have gone to oh, Roosters or could have, w- Yeah, could have, would have. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you look back now, but, um, at that time, you know, especially Brad and that showed a lot of faith um, in me. Um, Brad was your guy, eh? Yeah, yeah, 100%, 100%. Yeah. And when, like I said, we had a good crew there. We had a really good crew there. Um, yeah, like I said, it would have, could have, but it is what it is. So, yeah. yeah. How did you end up with the Dragons? Yeah, well, obviously we had that um, horrid year in 18 and it was... Me and Mitchie weren't working on the field type thing. Um, off the field, sweet. It is what it is. Both ball players want want the ball. Want the ball. Mm. Did you feel like um, like even though Fozzie was there on the ball, you'd still like when we were playing, you, know, mm. you can still see organising. Yeah, you're the guy running the team, um, and then he sort of comes in like trying to take over the team. Was that sort of the vibe? No, nah, it wasn't. It was just me, like Mitch want like a, a player wanting. The, the ball, a halfback, you know, the ball in his hand. Mm. And it kind of got to a point where it started taking sides, people creeping over sides type thing, which is never good, mm. which is never good. Um, me thinking back then, probably should have just said, Mitchie, you run it and let me just get back to running and enjoying, F- enjoying football. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm. And looking back now, it should have been me putting my hand up and go, I'll go on there, Mitchie. Because he, he, he played really well, 17 and well. He killed it as well in mm. 17. He played really well. So me looking back, um, yeah, could have just said, I've got a great halfback here. Let you do your thing. Let me twos. get out the back. <laughs> yeah. Let me run now. Let me like get back to running instead of being traffic control at the back, organizing plays, yeah. missing opportunities. Again, ego man, it will get you. <laughs> <laughs> ego man, it will get you. But um, but yeah, looking back, yeah, that should have happened, but it didn't. Um, Gareth Widdop was so Dragon. Gareth Widdop, I think, sit, 
decided to go to England the following year in mm. 2019, I think it was. So, um, I remember having that meeting in, um, yeah, in the office, eh? yeah, in the YKTR office. yeah, Mary and that came down and had a chat with them. And, and they sold the dream. I was sitting in that meeting, I was going, Yeah, Fuck, they're looking all right. <laughs> yeah, the well, boys are looking all right here. Yeah, yeah, the Ford pack, yeah, the like, Ford you know pack, I mean? and that. And then that year, they, they, they killed it that year as well. So, um, that 2018 year, they played really well as a team. Um, so yeah, excuse me. Um, and then so I was like, Right, I'll go there, yeah. Um, and got down there and then a few issues off the field with players that they had, big name players came about and it's, it's always hard with the, how big it was. It was obviously to Bellin. Um, You know, I got a few injuries like that that first year. So it didn't start off well, but mm. yeah, it, I got down there and I was down there. Did you like it down there? Uh, it was different. I just feel like you're never yourself down there. Right? Yeah. yeah I, and again, I think probably the football... I wasn't playing as good enough football either, to be fair, um, which doesn't help either. Go down there and, you know, you're assigning, um, and you're not playing the best football. You, you're not kind of enjoying the way they play football. Um, doesn't help, but again, that's on me and it's no excuses. But yeah, like you said, I never really got to kick on down there, which yeah. I was hoping for. So, so yeah. Yeah, what was the big differences in like playing style down there? Because you've gone from like Broncos, all your big forwards, fucking locky kicks, 40 20, everyone kick up the out, play some footy later, yeah. to BA, like we can do whatever we want. Yeah. Then going back to that sort of it's style. Pretty structured here yeah. to go to here, to go to there, you know, block, 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 block. Um, again, like I said, there was a, a big thing hanging over off the field. I'm not saying that's an excuse, but it does. As players, you don't say it does, but it does affect you, you know what I mean? Mm. Um, and then, like I said, a few injuries as well. But yeah, it was the more set up to play, 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 play type thing. But yeah, again, I look at it again and just be like, oh, that's it. That's it. <laughs> it was, it was, I yeah. remember the year I left, um, Dozer killed it. I go, where was that last year? He could have kept me a job. <laughs> <laughs> Almost Dallium. Did he, did he always get Dallium oh, that year, 22? Tw sure. I can't remember. Oh yeah, I like beauty. Could have kept me in a job, does, but here we are. Yeah, wonder what, wonder what it is down there. Eh? I just don't feel like they can. It doesn't help that you got half Wollongong, half Cronulla. You don't like the merger sort of vibe. Oh, people living where living, living like again, like if you do a team thing, people are like nah. That means I've got to drive, you know, an hour up to Cronulla, or you know, all those little things. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. Um, when, when did you know your sort of time was up of NRL? Like. Men mentally mentally, mentally, me mentally yeah. um i knew obviously at the dragons it just even like in my 200th game we played the rabbits and like they had an injury out on my edge and a four was out there yeah and like i was just going through like i just wasn't give me the ball like i know i can do something or like just didn't want the ball on my hand in the main bit. Like I'd, I'd be rats about it. Like yeah. I'd still want it. I was still competitive thereabouts, but I knew mentally when I clocked off, like I was gone. Was you that know? the moment, was it? Oh, it was up there. It yeah. was up there just because, again, like I've always, like I wanted the ball. I was always playing both sides, blah, blah, blah. And I just knew mentally, like, just like, nah, I don't have that extra little bit to, some days I would, mm. some days I wouldn't. And again, that's another point where I'd be like, yeah, no, nah, you're mentally not here. Mm. So, um, so yeah. So what's uh, sort of the past couple of years been like? Oh, obviously you went over to France, played a bit over there. Yeah. Got the Broncos back in. Yeah. I was watching you play the last couple of games of the year. Yeah. And you look like your old self. You yeah. look like you were just having fun. Bro. Yeah. The old freelancer rugby league player. <laughs> The half season king. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I love half season. I've just been floating around playing half seasons, the old freelancer. But um no, it was good. Again, I went over there more for the experience. Um, obviously in Europe you get to travel, do mm. all that. I've never done Europe before. So it was more of a life experience thing. It wasn't more so much football. Um, like you said, I've already kind of clocked off football wise, but I still enjoyed it. Mm. Still liked it for uh, what it was and just having a bit of fun with the boys so yeah it was more of a, um, a life decision to go over there and experience um life over there so it was good was it like in broncos back into super league yeah it was cool yeah it was cool um you mean dean have a laugh about it a, a, a little bit but um it was good especially because i kind of knew i wasn't going to stay super league um is a bit too serious of where i'm at in my life in footy you mm. know i'd rather play a bit of 
bit of local footy and knock about and have a laugh. So, um, yeah, it was good. It was, it was fun. Um, we didn't get off to the best start, but ended up coming over the top of them. It was good. <laughs> and it was, you know what? It was against Toulouse too. And when we didn't stay up in Super League, I, I try to stay at Toulouse mm. um, to get on the chamage and just play a bit of – because being in South France was good. And um, they're like, nah, 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 we don't want you. <laughs> so, so you can stay down there then. <laughs> yeah, and then so then when we played them in the champ, and they, I knew they wanted to go back up the Super League real bad. So mm. to beat them was um, it was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> um, bro, so you've come back and like uh, out of everyone that sort of transition out of football and like hasn't been perfect. No, but I feel like you've just like enjoyed it like yeah. i look at a lot of people in their struggle you know what i mean you just kind of cruised in yeah and i'm not saying it's been easy at all it yeah. is you you do get your days you just go oh man should have took it a bit you know i should be still playing league and and because it, it, just because it's easy it's an easy thing to do it's what you it's just know it. It, yeah yeah it's, yeah it's convenient like and you would know um for me rugby league was it it came like i did it easy me trying to learn is so hard. So I've never tried anything outside of rugby league, studying. Mm. Um, you know, I kind of didn't do that one or two years of going out and being a tradie before I made first grade. So, yeah, it's literally me trying to learn something new is is very hard. So yeah. um, it's difficult, but it's, you know, I'm obviously grateful we've got this company here for me to... Help me transition in after after footy, which makes it a lot easier. I can't com you know can't complain. I'm mm. here work with one of my best mates, doing something that I thoroughly enjoy with clothes and stuff and learning that type of stuff. So it's not like I'm working for Tom, Dick, and Harry down the road and don't know anyone. And I'm I feel like you could just roll in, but <laughs> and still enjoy it though. Like yeah, like that, I know? would, but again, in in There's life, that's you what you don't want to be doing for the rest of your life don't and. Know. You know, I realise now when the pay packet drops <laughs> and you're in the real world, it's totally different. So, mm. um, like I said, I'm very lucky that I've got this here for me to transition anyway and, and help me get into the real world. Um, but like you said, I've it's kind of weird I say this, but I've always kind of been content to play football and then just go back and just work, yep. which is which has probably helped me in the long run, but it's probably not the right mindset to be in. Mm. Um, because, yeah, like I've always been happy. Just, oh, yeah, I'll finish up and I'll just go work. Hopefully I've got a house and, you know, I have a partner and have a kid and that type living like that like that lifestyle. So, but once you get out, it's, it's not that easy. And obviously when you realise money doesn't come like that easy, your, bra your brain flicks over and, and you want to do better. Mm. So... Um, yeah, I'm excited for this next little bit um, to see how it'll go and um, see what's in store. Uh, your partner, Nicole. Yeah. Uh, if, I, if we were sitting here having this conversation <laughs> 10 years ago, uh, obviously you like, um, you've done well with girls and yeah. you like girls and girls like you back in the day. Yeah. Never really had a girlfriend no. growing up. What's it been like, the transition of being seen norms yeah. to been a like really good boyfriend um Fiance. It's, yeah, yeah it's it's different i know the boys are lining up to give me shit whenever <laughs> they can so i've got to cop that i've did my fair share oh. of, i've did my fair share of stirring the pot and giving shit to boys so it's only natural um but it's been good um you know um it's 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 a quiet life it's very different um do you like the quiet life yeah it's good mm. i know my the thing for me is i never had a girlfriend for a very long time i've partied enjoyed life traveled i've done all the exciting things as you do when you're coming through it's not like i've never been locked in a relationship or anything like that so now i'm in one i don't get fomo of you know what are, what are the boys doing <laughs> going out you know what i mean I, i've had it like yeah, you've had it all so I'm, right. I'm pretty lucky that i've got everything out my system and don't get me wrong i still love to have a beer with the boys or whatnot but it, if you just go out or if someone's out clubbing or they come to this i'm like oh yeah I'll, I'll wake yeah. up fresh tomorrow yeah that's the good vibe you know what i mean so <laughs> yeah it's, it's it's been good it's again it's i've had my fun football wise and that's been my life now i'm here got my partner so it's more about um right I, what am i going to do for my future family and and mm. how am i going to set that up type stuff so mm. Mm, yeah. um so you talk about family when you we, we talked about you not having a dad growing mm. up is that like your biggest motivation to be 
the person that you wish you had? Yeah, I, I've always said that I wanted kid young, but obviously, like, I probably didn't. I probably wasn't in the right mind mind, mind frame to do that. Um, you know, I wanted fun over stability, blah blah blah. But now, I've settled down. Um, you know, looking forward to you know having a child, and like you said, didn't have a dad. So for me to be the best dad that I can for my kid will be. Yeah, it'd be good. It'd be sick, eh? Yeah, hundred yeah. percent, bro. That gave me goosebumps. Yeah, bro. <laughs> that gave me goosebumps. Like, yeah. Um, so yeah, like, yeah. You, obviously, you just want to give them everything that you missed out on. So mm. hopefully, hopefully, it works out and, and it'll be good when it um, arises. Um, so in around now, I think it's in one of the coolest places it's ever been. I think yeah. the game product's awesome. I think players are cool. Like, how do you view the game now that you've left it and look back on it? Like in terms of like playing style, in terms of the way the boys can be themselves and express themselves. Yeah. Like, and like, we'll, to be fair, we've been a part of that. Yeah, it's it's um, like you said, it's really good to see the boys express themselves um, as players, and you know, get a few more characters in the game and whatnot. But the the biggest thing for me is just the way they think. They it's the way they're moving at the minute, as in like, okay, business. It's just not about rugby league anymore. It's like business personal branding that type stuff um it's really cool and and how professional they've turned that's a big one for that's me. the big yeah. one man. um and i i guess when the game keeps growing the money keeps going in you're gonna have to you're gonna it, it, that's the only way it's gonna go but i think for the game that's the best way for you know these younger boys being so professional moving different i think it's um it's, it's really good for nrl and obviously you can see in the product all them younger boys that are on stage now the football tactic you know mm. take for example the bronx and uh melbourne game you know what i mean it was crazy so plenty of talent out there and they've all got their head switched on which seems to be a good thing as well so <laughs> um it's, it's 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 good and and it's as a fan sitting back and and loving the game it's 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 good so when i think about you like coming into grade at nine and then 18 when mm. like people are trying to get you off the piss that's like a nine ten year period mm. of transition mm. and now we're into that next little phase now so we're 20 24 25 yeah we were like you're at the peak of your powers mm. 15 16 mm. like it's just, when we were getting on the piss every weekend. Exactly. Those boys aren't doing that shit, eh? No, nah, no way. Um, uh, even getting down the Dragons and that low max was there. And he was only still 18 when I first got down there. And then we'd play and then the next day he's putting in the group chat that he's having ice baths. I'm like, what's he doing? <laughs> Surely go have a beer. You know, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. that's just the two different type of ways. <laughs> and like, and it's like, oh, what? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's just oh, two different. Trust him? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's the two things. But again, I think it's better. It's better for the game. It's going to be better for the players in the long run. And I think that's been overlooked a lot is that transition phase from the old school type players and what they had to go through and how, I'm not saying everyone was depressed, but they didn't set themselves up after football. I think now the way these younger guys are moving, that rate won't be as high where we have to oh, check sure. check on the you know players that retire as much, which we will. But I'm saying, you know, like that older generation coming through when they finish, a lot of them would have struggled because they don't have the opportunities of social media, um, personal branding, blah, 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 yeah. and kind of just get left by the way, wayside. Do you reckon it can go the other way though? So like say Reese Walsh, next contract, he's on $2 million mm. a year. Like that that injection of money has never really been seen mm. before. Do you reckon it could go the other way where they're like, oh, fuck, I'm set now? Because those guys, like a gun, 5'8", yeah. back in the day, might get 250, yeah. 300, bro, and they're on big money. Yeah. And uh, that's not enough money to set yourself up. Yeah. Um, are you saying, like, because they're on big money, though, their football won't be as good? Well, or was, you mean after, are you saying? Also after. So, after? like, you, you got a chunk of change when yeah. you were playing. Yeah. And you weren't really thinking about, no. like, obviously we had this role yeah. in. Uh, but you weren't really thinking about anything else. We were talking about player managers before. And yeah. you said, because you're on so much money, you wouldn't even give a fuck. You just sign shit. Sign, yeah. 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 So now players are going to get paid twice, three times as much as what yeah. you were on. Yeah. Do you reckon that carefree attitude happens? Or are they so professional in business? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think they're okay. so I think they're so professional in business. I think you'll see a lot of people getting the right little like, right team around them. Yeah. As in it won't it won't probably won't be a manager, it might be a lawyer. Blah yeah, blah blah. Smart. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. They'll have their little team there that's going to be with them throughout their career. They obviously sort out money wise or whatever. But as you said, the more bigger money they're on, 
I think it'll just get more professional and professional and everyone will just move, start moving different. Yeah, I like that. So, yeah. Um, who are you liking in the league at the moment? Obviously, you've been watching a bit of football. Who's some guys you got your eye on that you like that are going well? Um, I was saying, um, I, f- I, don't, I don't know his name, but it's just, I watched, <laughs> I've watched a few Rabbits games. He comes <laughs> off the bench for the Rabbitohs. He's got like a mullet. I don't know his name, but he's good. Not Talis. What's it? Uh, what's it? Good. I'm not too sure what his name is, oh. um, but again, I uh, watched the Tigers and Para game. The two young, young superstars. Yeah. <laughs> that was really cool to watch. Um, and again, like when you're in football, you don't really care about that much. But as you get you get out, you enjoy that little you know hype around the younger stars and stuff like that. So that was cool. Um, I like Ezra Man at the minute. He's he, cool. He's, yeah, he's I like guy, him. Yeah. That him and uh, Reese, that little combo. Um, but yeah. Hmm. All right. Yeah. Um, oh, sorry. One last yeah. question. I obviously got to play Origin as well. I forgot about that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The one hit wonder. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so I this play one day, I the play vanilla one rice, the one <laughs> hit wonder. <laughs> I actually got to thank KP for that. I think he got injured. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, nah, it was cool, bro. It was a, a very cool experience. Obviously, I wish I, um, you know, could have played a, you know, a few more games than one. But the lead up with it, even just being in the camp before I got to play in that last game, they were over in Perth, just being in that environment with the calibre of players there, even like the Queensland staff, you've got all the legends there, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, it's crazy. You're listening, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you've got boys around. Uh, yeah. Crazy, man. So it was good experience for me. It was unreal, but it was more of a, that was more for my family and kind of, it was a good reward for them, everything they've done for me, especially my mum, yeah. you know, close family that have helped me you know, when I was younger, get to football. So, and we're all mad Queensland supporters. Like we're all, so it was, it was a more of a proud moment for me f- to give back to them type thing, but mm. it was cool. Obviously didn't get the win, um, but it was a, it was an unreal atmosphere. I just, re- I, I literally remember just running out and looking and that's it. And then kind of don't really remember any of the game except for the tackle I missed on Fergie. <laughs> 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 Sorry, Queensland. Oh, oh, yeah. God, come on, oh. man. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it was a cool experience, man. And and uh, like I said, it would have been better to play a lot more, but yeah. it is what it is. <laughs> you said I've got to thank you for playing the for the Kiwis. Yeah, you got to thank me because, like you said, <laughs> talking about heritage, I got offered a few times to play, but I have nothing to do with that side. Um, I'm probably I've got the most Aussie little twang, I'm a little <laughs> bogan. Like I just I felt uncomfortable going in there. And I and for me it would be I'm playing for the money, not yeah the, the culture. culture. And me going to Kiba Park, there's a lot of Maoris and Islanders, and I know how big that part is of the culture, that culture. Oh, yeah. And like for me, it would have been literally I'm, I I couldn't give a beep about the huck. It doesn't doesn't mean anything to me. So yeah. for me to go in there, fake it, collect my money. I was like, nah, didn't just didn't sit right. One of the lankiest hackers getting about it. <laughs> oh, God, who am I scaring anyway? Yeah. Bro? It would have you, been a lot. You I Jason Nightingale. Yeah, <laughs> I reckon I would have been worse than him, to be fair. <laughs> but yeah, that 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 was a big reason for me. Maybe if I do- dove into my culture a bit and learnt a bit before, but that was mm. never my interest to do that. Um, but yeah, so yeah. Thanks, bro. Forty k in the bank. Yeah, you're, <laughs> you're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> All right, Norm, thanks for jumping on. Appreciate no worries, your time, mate. Thank you. Oh.